Right, hello and welcome to the seventh webinar in the PiQ Intelligence for the Future series. It's great to have you here. I'm Alison Jones, I'm Director of Practical Inspiration Publishing, host of the Extraordinary Business Book Club podcast. And the aim of these webinars, as you know if you've been before, is to explore how work is changing uh, in these unprecedented times and to give us the insights, the strategies and the skills to help us navigate that transformation better. And of course, if you have a particular topic that you would like us to cover or any feedback on how we can make the sessions more useful, do drop me a line. It's alison at alisonjones.com. So today I'm really delighted to introduce Kelly Lucas. So Kelly is founding director at Fours Lucas, the consulting business that helps C-suite executives and their teams establish and maximize their revenue growth engine through customer success. A founding member of the European Customer Success Network, she works with her peers to pioneer the emerging profession. She co-founded CustomerSuccessNetwork.org, EMEA's primary customer success community, and she's a regular speaker at conferences such as SuccessCon, who knew that was a thing, uh, <laughs> Pulse Europe and CSU Live. Uh, she began her career in finance, she transferred to IT and spent over 20 years consulting for and with enterprise businesses like HSBC, Barclays, IBM, Deloitte, Vodafone. And then she moved to Ghana to work with anti-slavery NGO Challenging Heights and she continues to lend her voice to the third sector wherever possible. And we might well come on to that today, <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> she's, an NLP, yeah. <laughs> she's an NLP master practitioner, providing expert leadership coaching and mentorship to her peers and clients in project and relationship management. Most specifically with a focus on customer service. So welcome, Kelly. It's great to have you here. Thank you very much for having me. And thank you for an amazing introduction. I don't think anyone's ever put so much into it. And I sound quite impressive, don't I? You really do. <laughs> you really do. Please don't under undermine that. <laughs> what is that mean? <laughs> so for the, I mean, the obvious question, Kelly, what is customer success? Because I, I guarantee some people here won't really understand what that phrase means. Yeah, I understand that. It's, uh, as you mentioned, it's an emerging discipline. Um, I mean, we, we keep saying it's an emerging discipline. It's been around in its current form for about 10 years, um, but it's actually, it's common sense. So, you know, I say this at the beginning of the book that I wrote, um, you know, customer success is fundamentally truly knowing and understanding your customers. So it's about making sure that you understand what motivates them? What are their um, desired outcomes, both per personally and professionally? Because customer success is about creating a trusted advisor partnership with your customers in order to help them achieve those outcomes. Um, you know, it will be through using a suite of services and products, including your own. But the real key is not to get stuck on what you're, what you're offering. You should be talking to your customers about what they need, what their outcomes are, and how you are going to work together in order to achieve those. So, so it's in a nutshell. And it's very different. I mean, I've, I, I, know I made this mistake when I first met you. It is hugely different from customer service. But just again, make that explicit because it might be so obvious to you. But I, I know from experience, it's not obvious to everyone. Yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, customer success is a philosophy, um, more than just one person or one team. Um, so it would be company wide, it should be a culture, it should, should be a mindset. Um, it's the key difference is that customer success is proactive. You are working proactively with your, um, with your customers in order to understand those outcomes and understand how you can make them successful. Customer service is generally reactive. Um, so your customers are coming to you asking you, how, you know, technical questions out about your product or, um, or your service. Um, they might be asking how to log into something. You might be having to um, you know, guide them to FAQ and um, communities, knowledge bases, um, but it's always, it's reactive, it's reasonably repetitive, um, and it can be, you know, very well managed um, with processes if you set that up, whereas customer success is much more proactive and about partnerships. And many big companies now have customer success departments. And of course, in your book, The Customer Success Pioneer, you, you basically take somebody through the kind of first year of setting up a customer success function. Yeah. Where, where does that function sit in the company? Who are the types of people leading that? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, and the answer is it can sit anywhere. Um, and uh, that will quite often depend on a number of factors. Um, so the maturity of your organization itself uh, and the size of it, um, the maturity of your customer success team, 
uh, and the maturity of your customers um, and the size of your customers. So generally speaking, and certainly in my experience, uh, customer success teams are quite often established um, under the COO, so the Chief Operating Officer, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> because they would sit with teams such as support, training, um, <clears throat> excuse me, professional services, consulting if you have them. Um, quite a lot of organizations then tend to move their customer success team to the sales area. So under the chief sales um, officer or chief revenue officer, chief income officer, whatever um, acronym you use. Um, and that's because we are still trying to get organizations so whilst many people haven't heard of the term customer success there's a lot of businesses out there who um, still don't understand that it's a business imperative um, and that it really will be the life force and saving force of their organization if they implement it and implement it well and really commit and invest in it. Well, can I pick up on that because that, yes, I think that's, that's the critical piece isn't it why why is it that you think it's so important for a company to be successful to focus on their customers success well i'm going to i'm going to respond to that by saying i don't understand why businesses don't understand the imperative i don't understand why they don't get how important it is so um i mean it boils down to the fact that without customers you do not have a business so why would you not focus on them and the more successful they are the more benefit you get from that because if they are getting great success from their partnership with you they're going to grow that partnership with you so they're going to invest more in you they're going to extend the use of your product or service they're going to you know take more um, seats they're going to introduce it to other departments within their their organization they're also going to become advocates they're going to refer you they're going to rave about you they're going to they become your virtual sales team so you then end up in a position where your cost of retaining a customer is much lower than cost of acquiring a customer. Um, so if you invest in retaining your customers and growing those customers, um, I mean, Salesforce, for example, I don't know if any of you have heard of um, salesforce.com. It's a CRM, a customer relationship manager um, platform. Um, and they're, they're credited as being the first organization, modern organization who implemented customer success they don't ever have to sell to a new customer ever again and they will still keep growing because they are you know focused on their existing customer base they make sure that those customers are successful that those customers are growing um, and because they're all growing companies they're all taking on new employees all the time so they need the product and service as well so they never have to um, you know well, if they wanted to, they could get rid of their sales team and just continually um, concentrate on retaining their, and growing their customers. And that would continue to make them successful. And uh, that's minimizing costs. So for those people out there who think that business is all about profit and the bottom line and getting as much money in as possible, it makes no sense to me how they haven't understood that looking after your um, existing customers is cheaper and therefore maximizes your profit than going after new customers. It's, it's a no brainer as far as I'm concerned. But I happen to know that philosophically, you don't think it's just all about the bottom line, do you? So tell me a little bit more about your philosophy of customer success as a, as a sort of way of life. Yeah, I, I, I did really well there. I, uh, I thought I'm going to ignore that rabbit hole because uh, otherwise I will go down it. Uh, yeah, so obviously for me, um, it, it's not that it's not all about the profit because I think you can do both. I think what the fundamentals of customer success, you know, looking outwardly at the success of others, putting that as your priority, I think if, if and you know, I've mentioned the fact that I think customer success is a business philosophy. It should be an organization-wide mindset. It should be a culture. It should be you know, absolutely understood and invested in and committed to by the CEO. And that should filter down through the entire organization. It brings all sorts of other benefits. Um, it brings um, people alignment. It brings motivation. It brings fulfillment. Everybody is looking after other people to make sure that they're successful in their role that, you know, so that's internally. You're also looking at your customers, making sure they're, they're successful. And if we can apply that customer success mindset across all businesses in the world, rather than the current situation where we've got extreme capitalism, 
and people are only thinking inwardly they're only thinking about their own success and um, their own profit um, their, their own material um, goods that they can buy from their success um, all of this selfishness and divisiveness if we could start looking outwardly in the business world because that's such a big part of you know life for many of us particularly in the developed world then i think it would lead to people being much more selfless generally so when we get up in the morning rather than thinking about what we need for that day we would think about what other people need for that day and i think if we do that in our business life then that would automatically roll over into um the 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 world at large so i think customer success is doing business better and if we all had a customer success mindset in everything we did we would end up doing life better and therefore helping and supporting and facilitating those people who um, you know need more of our help more of our attention um, so i just think customer success if we can sell that story to everyone i think we'd still do incredibly well financially because when you make other people successful they inherently make you successful so i'm not talking about diminishing the profit I'm talking about maximizing it through better business practices, better emotional um, practices, better motivation, better fulfillment, better passion, and therefore um, instilling that entire connectedness through the entire world, which I think will lead to better situations for many people who are in um, you know, detrimental circumstances right now. Sorry, I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> it was brilliant. And, you know, I think we're, we're all inspired. We all see, wow, this is actually something that, that feels quite visionary. We're on board. <laughs> you know, Thank you. We get customer success. Now, tell us what a customer success strategy looks like. How the hell do you actually do it in an organisation? Uh, it's, it is really difficult because um, because people don't get it. So at the moment, if you are a customer success manager, which is the generic job title, um, you have to spend a good portion of your day evangelizing it as well as doing it. Um, but once you've got people on board and, you know, if you're really lucky, you know, if the CEO um, gets it and understand it. And, you know, I was very lucky. My very first proper title of customer success manager i worked for an organization that was very customer focused our product was um was people focused um so we were all about relationships and making sure that people found ways to connect with each other which is you know the fundamental of customer success so i did a customer success role in a very customer focused organization so we had a company mindset of customer focus and that's the real key your ceo absolutely has to be committed to it understand it and invest in it um, and then your entire company has to include that mindset so you always have to be thinking i have a mantra which is their success is your success so whenever you're thinking about doing something you need to think about how you're contributing to the other person's success how you're moving them forwards to that goal um, so that that's the you know very, I'm putting it, very, it seems very simplistic but that's the fundamental for getting customer success into an organization you have to understand um, and instill a culture of customer focus of outward thinking um, and that you know that goes internally as well as externally um, you know for me um, a customer is anybody that I work with so it could be internal or external so the sales team you know they're my customers what can I do in order to make them successful and conversely I'm their customer so what can they do in order to make me successful and if we're always working in that way and always got the customer and the success at mind the outcomes in mind then that goes a long way to towards it obviously I wrote an entire book on it um, there's way more to say than I even said in the book and we're continually developing and uh, um, evolving how we talk about customer success, how we deliver customer success and how we expand it across an organisation and into our customers' organisations. Um, but that, that's got to be the fundamental. If you, if you don't have a culture, if you don't critically, if you don't have a CEO who um, is bought into the idea of customer success, then you know, you're, you're going to be fighting a losing battle. And in a bigger company like Salesforce, for example, which you know, is yep. a great example you gave earlier, you, you have customer success departments, you have people who are evangelizing that, who are reminding people who are setting processes up, you know, so that people can check in with customers, look at the roadmap in terms of what customers want and all that kind of good stuff. I know from the book, it goes right the way through the process from, from planning what, you know, how you're going to develop your product through to um, maintaining it and everything. But if you're just a small company, 
if you are the CEO and the sales director and the customer support person, um, what practical things can you do uh, to, to make customer success part of how you do business? It is simply making sure that you understand your customer. Um, you know, I, I also say this, I think, in the first paragraph of the book, you know, um, customer success isn't rocket science, um, which is why I, I have this complete lack of understanding as to why people just don't naturally adopt it and, and, and uh, you know, use all of these business practices. Um, it's just making sure that you understand your customer. So rather than having everything that you plan and deliver and offer centered around what you believe is needed, find out what your customer wants, find out, find out what, where your customer is heading, find out what they need, find out you know, whether your service is actually going to help them achieve those goals. Um, you know, the great thing about customer success, if, if it's done well, is you know, it is a partnership right from the very beginning. You should stay up front. You should be very transparent and authentic. Um, you know, you, customers know that we want their money. You know, that, that's a given. So say it. You know, our you know what, what are your outcomes from our partnership because it is a partnership you give us money we give you something in return for that and what we want to give you is you know a contribution towards your goals and your success so tell us what that is don't tell us why you've bought our service necessarily but tell us what your goals are what are your business goals what are your business outcomes what are your post personal um, goals and motivations because all of that will help you understand what they need and how you can contribute towards that and you know taking that a step further if you feed that um, information back into creating and evolving your product or service then you're going to have more chance of success because you'll be providing something that people actually want rather than something that you think they want. So just talk to your customers, find out what they want, make an agreement as to how you can partner together. And I would be very clear on this. Um, you know, it's um, customer success kind of evolved because we moved from a, it, it's very much a, um, an IT starting point so we moved from perpetual license which used to mean that um, when a customer paid for a tech project they paid for everything up front and it would quite often in large organizations it could run to millions of pounds and it was um, it's known as capital expenditure um, but you have to get a return on investment on that until you can consider ever replacing it so salespeople would get a customer to sign a contract and then they'd run away because they've got all the money they've had all the commission they've got all the money i don't need to worry with that customer maybe i'll approach them in you know if i'm still in this job in 10 15 20 years time when they might need an upgrade or you know a development or something um but i'm just going to run away from that buyers took all the risk they then had to you know they paid the the vendor they took on the technology they then had to run a large internal project they had to manage change um change management through the organization in order to make sure that their um, their employees adopted the technology. It was, you know, it was a huge shift when subscription came into the world, when, you know, the internet came and software as a service came, you know, where vendors now do all the hosting and you pay a subscription, which may be monthly, it may be annually, but you could walk away at pretty much any time you like nowadays. So the, the risk has massively transferred into the vendor side, which is why Salesforce realized that they needed to actually continue to talk to the customer rather than walking away. Because if they didn't talk to them for a year, when the renewal came up, the chances were the customer would say, well, we've had no value from this. So we're not gonna, we're gonna go and use somebody else's product because you're pretty useless. You only ever talk to us when you want us to sign a check. So if you talk to your customer and bring them into a partnership, it really helps them understand that you want the best for them. And we are, even if you're, whether you're B2C or B2B, but you know, when you're in working in B2B, there is a, a danger that you assume you're working with a, a large corporate and it's faceless and it's, you know, un, you know, it's not human but you're always talking to individuals and an individual has the power to say yes or no to renewing your business so if you create that connection and that trust and that loyalty which we all crave as human beings we all want to feel listened to we all want to feel heard and we all want to be connected so if you talk to your customers and figure out what it is that they need they are more likely to stay with you they are more likely to grow with you and they are more likely to recommend you to other people 
who will then do the same. And that's how you grow exponentially and by minimising your costs. And it feels like part of a sort of broader shift away from transactional towards more relationship based businesses, perhaps. Yes. Um, and, I, and I think that's what we're all looking for, you know, generally speaking, because you, know, you are trying to minimise the cost of, of bringing in customers. And it is recognised that the cost of acquiring a customer, which um, acronym CAC, versus the cost of retaining a customer are far higher so it takes a lot i mean if you think about it you know whether you're doing lead gen through writing lots of content and creating a community and creating an emailing list you're putting in an awful lot of effort to try and get you know people coming to you in order to you know find out what your service is and then there's lead time while you talk to them have discovery calls um that's a lot of work. Whereas if you've got somebody, if you've got somebody who's begging for your attention, you know, how can you help me? Um, that takes less effort because you've already started a relationship with them. You don't have to do the pre-discovery phase. Um, and as you build that, um, I mean, I, I don't know if anybody here knows um, an organization called One of Many. Um, they're fantastic at this. They have, um, you know, they've built a huge community. Uh, whenever they create a new um, offering, the people who have done everything that they've offered before leap on it. They jump on it because they've created such an amazing community and such a, a feeling of um, shared responsibility for everybody's success. Um, um, and weirdly, up until I met them, they'd never heard of customer success, but actually they do it incredibly well. That's, that's lovely. You don't actually have to know what it's called. You just have to be doing it. <laughs> Abs uh, well, and that's true, you know, yeah. and that, that is the thing. There are, there are probably lots of organisations out there who are doing it well and probably B2C do it better than B2B anyway, um, because you are working with individual consumers. Um, so you, you have to create a, a relationship there. Um, but yeah, if you, if you translate that into larger organizations, you know, people do it. And there are, there are some salespeople who do it incredibly well. You know, there's an awful lot of salespeople who don't do it well, but there are a lot of pe um, salespeople who understand that relationships sales is the way forward. You can no longer just, um, you know, get somebody to sign on the dotted line and then run away from them skipping with glee because you've got your commission there has to be something more more in it and we're getting a few questions through which i'm going to save thank you jane and ruth's saying this is brilliant love this um oh, just, yeah, we're just going to save the questions to the q a which will be like just a couple more points for this bit um i would love to know kelly how you think the current pandemic has changed how people think about customer success you know, I would love to say that it's made a huge difference, but I'm sad to say that I don't think it has. Um, people have reacted uh, quite um, black and white, really. There's been uh, there's been a, an awful lot of companies who, at the very beginning of the pandemic, uh, and I'm sure some of this was was knee jerk, but um, actually made uh, made their customer success teams redundant because they felt that um, it was a cost that um, that was no longer applicable which makes no sense to me again because um uh, sorry and th th this was one of the points i don't think i quite got to when i was talking about where customer success should sit in an organization quite often people move the the team into the sales organization in order to make people um recognize that customer success has a huge contribution to make in revenue terms so you know customer success teams are responsible for um your the revenue that is generated from your existing customer portfolio and in many organizations, that does not take long before the existing portfolio is way larger than your new business target in the year. So, for example, at Artesian at one point, uh, we had a, an existing portfolio of around 5 million and our new business target was only 2 million. Um, and yet sales got the biggest investment and commitment because nobody really quite equated the fact that you know, we need to look after this section over here um, because they are worth more money to us right now. Um, so because people haven't understood that we have such an impact on the revenue, um, and that's a really key point, that when people are thinking about reducing costs, they think of customer success as a cost center, not a profit center. So they cut the team. Um, and when I heard this in the early days of, um, of lockdown, I was just beside myself right now or, you know, at that point, 
and now still, you know, there are very few organisations who have the budget to um, to go out and buy new things. Uh, obviously, Zoom is making a killing right now because we've all, if we weren't aware of it before, then, you know, I was, I've been using it for a number of years, but lots of people had never heard of it. So Zoom are making a killing, but very few other companies are. Um, so if you're not, if you're not able to get new sales in the door, why would you cut a team whose sole focus is on making sure you retain your existing customers? That makes no sense to me. So I wish I could say that coronavirus has had a positive impact. I do know that there are some organizations out there who have shifted their you know, business, uh, business development teams, their sales teams, their account management teams into customer success so that you know, there's shared responsibility and you know, extra capacity right now because there is extra handholding needed. Um, and the thing that I have loved is it really has shown that our belief that creating that trusted advisor, that um, authentic and transparent relationship with your customers really does hold you together in times of crisis. Um, you know, I've heard great stories of um, customers and suppliers talking to each other about, um, you know, how they can support each other during this period, you know, giving payment holidays or um, extending the length of a contract so they get, you know, maybe 15 months for, for the price of 12. Um, or, you know, if their renewal date came up during this period, you know, they've, they've allowed them to keep using the, the product or service for another three, six months until this is all sorted out. And that will be remembered and that will really reflect in the, you know, the, the referrals that these customers make, the case studies that they'll put out there, the, you know, just the networking and the, you know, like I've, I've mentioned one of many today, you know, if you've got that great strength of connection with your customers, they're going to remember that and they're going to say it. Uh, random times when they're having conversations with people and you just never know what that's going to bring to you so you know their success is your success and i wonder if it will uh, in the longer term as we sort of come out of the of the lockdown into a sort of very new world it's very hard to know exactly yeah. what that's going to look like but it's yeah. hard not to think that um, some element of that sort of sense of mutual dependence won't be part of it yeah and, and i hope so and again that leads back into my my overall hope for the customer success philo philosophy and how that will create a better world because you know if, if these if some companies are managing to understand this need for connected partnership and the wider community then hopefully that will spread and we'll you know we'll be able to because we have more motivation fulfillment and passion that will allow us to open our minds to things beyond our own personal world which will allow us to do much more in this in you know in the third sector i think yeah. i hope anyway and let me bring it right down to dirty tactics now because <laughs> people <laughs> listen going i really this resonates with me i like the sound of what you're saying i see the sense of it can you give us like a, a good starting point what could you actually do in your business tomorrow that would help bring this kind of thinking more into the way that you run your business yeah, that's, um, I mean, if, if <laughs> uh, I'm going to, I'm going to end up talking uh, consultant speak now. Um, it really, it really does depend um, on your situation. So, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry. I don't know, um, you know, any of the situations of any of the people on the, on the line. So, you know, if you are in a position of um, senior leadership, then, um, you know, start speaking to the other team members. Um, if you're CEO, then, you know, start you know do you have values and principles that um you have defined for your organization um, for your business again i don't know the size of your businesses um you know if you don't have values and principles then create some make them um you know bring your team with you um you know it's as much as i'm saying you need to talk to your customer to understand what their outcomes are you know part of um adopting any slightly different process or different culture you know you need to make sure that you apply change management uh, and one of the fundamental rules of that is that you take people with you so you know talk to your your organization um and however that might be so you know if you're in the leadership team then talk to the rest of your, your leadership team to understand how they feel about these things uh, what values and principles they 
um, hold dear to them and that they believe is part of your culture. And if that doesn't align to what you think customer success should be or what you believe your culture should be, then, you know, do some work around that. Um, that's probably where I would start. I think that's probably the thing that I recommend in the book first is to consider what your philosophy is, your business philosophy is, what your business culture is. And also be aware don't just assume that because you think your business culture is customer focused don't assume that it actually is um, there are lots of warning signs that people might say that they understand customer centricity customer focus customer success you know it comes in all of those guises um, but when you actually scrutinize it by looking at missions and um, yeah, mission vision values principles if your company has those and you look at them and customer isn't in them at all then they're not customer focused um, if your CEO says he's customer, says they are customer focused, um, but they are never talking to customers, they're not going out and visiting them, they're not picking up the phone to them, they're not getting involved when um, customers are escalating challenges, then they are not customer focused. Um, so that that's the thing that I would probably focus on focus on most um, because it's the it's the biggest part of it. If um, if you try and tell people that they need to be customer focused, but you don't have a culture that supports that, then it's really difficult to implement. And actually, there's some really practical things just about going out and talking to people. I love yeah. that. <laughs> well, if, if, talk to people, uh, and that that will you know it's just a fundamental talk to people. Don't assume anything. Um, just talk talk to people and and figure out how you know, where they want to go and then figure out how you can help them get there because that will ultimately take you where you want to go. Brilliant. What a succinct way to, to end that main part. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I th that's all the questions we have time for, which I, th I think is all right. Just looking through, I think we've covered them all. So thank you, Kelly. And I think the thing that's really come out of that last question in particular is the uh, the imperative, you know, the need to remember that if you are going to make this philosophy part of your life, and you know, why wouldn't you? After all we've heard today, you have to do it. You have to be you not just say that you're going to do it, but actually follow through. Because I think you know the, the worst, the only thing worse than not doing customer success well is saying that you're going to focus on it and then not actually following through. So, yeah, Paula's saying great session. Thank you, very inspiring. That's great. Thank you, Paula. Right, well, that's it for today. And uh, as you know, the, the sessions are now monthly rather than weekly, which is a, a rather more sustainable um, <laughs> frequency for me. Uh, yeah, Jane's saying brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, so the next session that will be running will be, uh, oh, I should, before I go, sorry, I know that Jane asked me in the group, but I, I didn't say it out loud, so I'll say it now. Uh, Kelly's book is called The Customer Success Pioneer, The First 12 Months of Your Journey into Growth. It is absolutely brilliant. And, you know, if you are thinking about customer success in your business, there is no other place to start so so do grab a copy of that um so yes next month's um, webinar is going to be with marianne page who's the author of simple logical repeatable the mcfreedom report and her new book which is publishing next month with practical inspiration is mission to manage and it's all about making business more successful more resilient through systems and really robust sane management processes she is uh, she is great and if you would like to become a practical inspiration author like kelly like marianne uh, i'd love to hear from you we're very proud to be publishing partners with people like that in a very wide range of fields and you can find out more about us at practicalinspiration.com so that's it ken saying thank you very much very interesting session thank you all thank you kelly on behalf of everybody here and everybody who will be watching this afterwards as well and uh, hope to see you all back here in july for the next practical inspiration webinar goodbye for now thanks 